Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Thursday, January 19th, 2023. And tonight I'm reviewing more stories from H.P. Lovecraft, The Complete Fiction. As always, you can find all the episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me, at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S A L S I D O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. And uh, so the plan for tonight is to get through, I have six of these stories here uh, lined up uh, to talk about here. And uh, so that's what we'll be doing tonight. Next week will be uh, the usual Sunday and uh, Tuesday will be True Paranormal Stories from the Web. Monday and Wednesday will be um, paranormal news and then next Thursday we'll uh, see what happens we we have something planned out if it works but uh, I always like to keep that open because you never know when plans change so it'll be a review of some kind um, book review, comic book review something along those lines so um, I think that takes care of everything so I think with that I can get to the stories here as I always say with Lovecraft um, there are aspects to his stories that are uh, a bit behind the times, um, to say the least. And uh, also the writing is much better than I'm able to just describe here. So definitely check out the stories, though, for to get all the details on the concepts that I will um, be pointing out in, the, in these shows. Because that's the part that is the most interesting to me, is these paranormal concepts that he uh, includes in all these stories of his. So that's why I'm doing this whole series is to talk about those connections between the um, the real world, whatever that is, and then um, things that people come up with or people that things that people are um, maybe g given in their dreams or just however, however that works. So um, let me get to the first story here. And then invert the colors because it's a white background on the screen. There we go. Okay. This first story I'm going to talk about here is called The Silver Key. Um, now, another thing to mention, too, in this book, apparently it's not organized in terms of chronological order. And many of these stories connect, so definitely recommend looking into that more. There are characters that are in multiple stories, and there are also multiple stories that should be read in a certain order, but in this book, they were not. <laughs> so, um, I will just be focusing on the individual stories, and uh, maybe at some point I'll go back and uh, do a little review of the whole, the, each sequence, if possible. But, um, but yeah, so, let's see here. This story, let's see, i got to find the plot section. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. The story uh, follows a, a character that has appeared and does appear in some of uh, Lovecraft stories, uh, Randolph Carter. And he finds, as he's getting older, and uh, reaches the age of 30, um, that he's gradually lost the ability to, or the key to the gate of dreams. Um, uh, because as a, as a younger person, as a kid maybe even, he was able to um, have much more vivid and frequent dreams, uh, and he is losing that ability. Says he used to, he used to believe that um, life was nothing but pictures and memory, whether they're from real life or dreams, which is an interesting concept. Um, and he says he he highly preferred his nightly night his dreams basically over the um basically real life and uh he thinks and this is all kind of from his point of view here he thinks that um dreams reveal truths missing from uh, the waking life 
so regarding the purpose of humans and the universe. Uh, so, and especially as it's related to the idea of beauty, as it's uh, basically in human terms. So, um, he finds that uh, over time he, so he's losing his ability to dream, apparently. And, uh, so let's see here. So he eventually uh, goes back into, goes into seclusion to try to figure all this out. And because of this, apparently, his um, dreams start to show up again, just a little bit. And, um, but he's still not able to visit the same places he had when he was younger. So during one of these dreams, uh, his grandfather, who has already passed, tells him about a silver key in the attic of his, the grandfather's house uh, that has strange symbols on it, which Carter finds and takes with him. Oh, apparently this is in Carter's house, I'm sorry. Um, and so Carter finds this in his own attic and takes it with him on, on this journey. So here you have this possible contact with his grandfather, or if you want to be more skeptical, some other entity or part of his own mind, which all are interesting ideas. Um, but he takes the key and travels back to his childhood home uh, back in uh, northeastern Massachusetts, of course, where a lot of love, Lovecraft stories are set. And uh, he finds this cave that he used to play in. And somehow the, the cave lets him return to his childhood as a 10 year old boy. And the adult, the, the current Randolph Carter, vanishes. So here we have possibly a time anomaly here, a uh, reality disruption, something. Um, and so the story then starts talking about how Randolph's relatives had noticed that around 10 years old he'd get he'd um acquired this ability to <laughs> glimpse events in his future so yes definitely time related here um and the narrator of the story which is at this point the young boy growing up to a man again kind of and he says he expects to see randolph the older randolph carter um in his dreams and so, um, so yeah, this is a, a odd story here, but really amazing. Um, and uh, the so the key again is also part of this dream realm, but also maybe possibly a connection to the mysteries of all of the universe or reality. So that's basically where that story ends. Really, um, amazing story there which is all the all the ideas and concepts playing together in there i really like like that story a lot so um so that's the first one i want to talk about tonight and uh let's see here we'll see how many of these we get through because we're already seeing it's like 10 minutes into the stream so i'd rather not go for two hours if i can help it so we'll get through what we can um so that's the first story here now this next story is also featuring Randolph Carter. So this is, but this is um, him as an adult, and apparently it talks about a this event that happened to him. Uh, and it's let's see here. Um, looking at the plot here, okay. So this is all a story that is this character's statement on events that happened to him uh, and the and a friend of his. So um, and basically the reason for the statement is authorities found found Carter wandering through uh, the swampland in a state of shock. So Carter starts to explain what happened and the disappearance of his friend uh goes by the last name of warren 
So Warren has found a book written in an unknown language. And, uh, but he was able to figure some of it out, apparently, but he never revealed it to Carter. And, um, mentions that Warren has, has other strange books as well. So, um, apparently from this book, Warren figures out that there are doors and or stairways that exist between the surface world and the underworld. So he convinces Carter to go with him to the location of one of these portals. Now, underworld, the, the meaning of that there is, it means both things. It means this world, the subterranean world, but also sort of a, a, a world of the, the dead or, the, or the, the basically just the unknown kind of thing. Um, so they find this ancient graveyard uh, near a swamp, and Warren finds a tomb and opens it to reveal a stairway that goes into the, the ground. And he le he um, Warren goes into this stairway, but tells Carter to stay back. And um, so Warren goes down with uh, uh, with a lantern, but eventually both he and the lantern light fade away. And um, but they're able to communicate through this wire, telephone wire kind of contraption. Um, so Carter uh, is listening for si signs of Warren. Warren starts to make um, to to talk, and um, eventually he's trying to describe the this whole underground world, and um, tells Carter to to run to get away from there. So Carter calls to Warren down the line. Um, and then there's this other voice that shows up telling Carter that Warren is dead. So something or someone apparently may have gotten Warren. So that's basically how that story ends. Um, and then, of course, the, it goes back to the beginning of the story, which is where... Um, Carter was just driven mad by this whole experience and found uh, by others in the area after. So, um, amazing story, very well, well written in terms of the suspense and everything. Better than I can do in a summary here, like I always say. But um, I'm definitely starting to see all the patterns in his stories now, Lovecraft stories now. It's gotten to the point now where I feel like I can usually tell how a story is is going to yes there we go pdg you fool warren is dead yes that is correct that is what the story says too and what the voice says in the story um but uh yeah so amazing story there the uh, classic kind of horror a story ending but yeah i'm starting to notice i can usually tell what general path the story is going to follow now that i've listened to so many of them which in a way is good, but in a way is not so good. <laughs> but it's still there's still amazing, amazing stories there. So, um, so moving on to the next stories, I guess we can get through at least one more, probably at least another few more. We'll see. Um, but so let's see here. This next one is called the Strange High House in the Mist, and. Um, the story follows uh, Thomas Olney, who is a uh, philosopher that is visiting a, a town in Kingsport, Massachusetts, with his family. Um, and he notices this strange house on a cliff overlooking the ocean. Um, and it appears to be very old and very high up on the cliff. And... Um, People in the area do not like the place, which no one, um, but no one has apparently, has apparently visited there. <clears throat> so only climbs th this uh, cliff, or this, uh, yeah, this cliff approaches, approaches the house and finds um, he's invited into the place by a mysterious man that, that lives there. So... 
The only door to the house, though, opens directly on the sheer cliff. And so all you can see through the doorway is uh, this drop-off. The, um, the man in the house actually lets the narrator only in through a window. And so there is... Um, this old man starts to talk about the history of the area and um and then this uh there's this other encounter that happens there it's very vague um but uh and there's it's only basically uh won't talk about what happened when he comes back and uh part of it is because apparently he is he's come back with only part a small part of his spirit the rest has been left behind in this old house. So, um, very well, again, just the story is so much better to read it and uh, get the full experience on that one. The summary is only so good because of that. But uh, it's almost like a uh, sort of a haunted house kind of story in a way. So, and uh, yeah, really amazing story there as well. So, also, uh, <laughs> Logan is, has joined me on the chair here. So, but, uh, so this next one is called The Street. This is another one of those where it's very much, the story is in the writing. And it talks about this history of a street in a New England city. Um, doesn't say for sure, but it's presumed to be thought to be Boston. And it talks about it's basically the history of the of the street from the times it was established um, back in the uh, pre-Revolutionary War days to its history all the way up through um, World War One. And it talks about how this the city grows up around the street and everything changes. Um. So, and it talks about that cha those changes in the people that live there um, to the people that just visit there. Um, so it's really an amazing just description of life on the street, um, the li life of the people there, according to this somewhat conscious version of a entity that is just the whole environment itself. So, um, very, uh, very amazing story, and there's, uh, also, there's just, it's very, very well done there. I, I'm not going to try to describe this one anymore. I think it's, uh, just, I uh, definitely recommend checking it out. So, there is a, um, an event that happens in the story, uh, about this group of, um, people that are plotting the destruction of, of the, the, the country on Independence Day on the 4th of July. And, but when the, day is, when the day arrives, the people gather. Um, but before they can get started, all the houses in the, in the street uh, collapse on top of each other. I forgot about this part here. Just because of how the story is written, it flows very well, very fast. But, um, so these houses all collapse on the people that were going to do all this. And so it's almost like the street defends itself and the country itself, too, uh, from these people. And others in the area that saw everything happen, uh, they, they say that after this, these, all these houses collapsed, these observers saw visions of the trees and the rose gardens that had been there on the street before everything had started to change. So, um, amazing story as well, going to the idea of do places have minds of their own in a way, um, or at least some kind of presence. And uh, in extreme circumstances, can they fight back when they know that there's something about to happen? So... Uh, another great story as well there. 
So let's see what the next one is. Um, okay. I have two more left here. One more short one and one more longer one. And um, we'll see how long it takes to the shorter one here. We may save the, the long one for another time. This one, next one is called The Terrible Old Man. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So this, uh, the story is about a strange old man. It says it's, he's so old that no one can remember when he was young. And so basically Tastern or Stern, I guess, that no one um, knows his real name. Apparently he lives alone in this ancient house on Water Street in the town of Kingsport. And uh, it says even even the people that live in this town, very few know much about this old man's life. But uh, it's explained and believed that he was once a uh, once a, a captain of many ships, and of course because of that has acquired a lot of wealth. And um, people there, the, the people in the town that have visited the property say they've seen strange collections of stones in the front yard and even seen the, the old man carrying on conversations with mysterious bottles on his table and says that they would make definite vibrations as if in an answer. So basically just communicating with other entities so the story then switches to these three robbers that learn about this this old man's house and all the treasure that's said to be there. So, um, Ricci and and Sanek, I'm not sure, and Silva are the names of the man, the last names. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Ricci and Silva go inside to convince the old man to to basically give them his treasure. While Sanek waits out outside in the car. And after quite a while, Sanek is waiting, still waiting for these his two friends, two allies to show up with whatever they are able to get. Um, but he's startled by this, this, the sounds from the house of horrible screams and assumes that the, his, Partners are being too rough with with the old man, um, and then, but then after a while things go quiet, and then when the gate of the house opens, the old man is the one that shows up, smiling, at Zanuck, Zanuck, um, and so um, the story basically ends with locals finding the remains, the bodies of the three robbers um, found by the seaside horribly slashed as with many blades, it says, basically. Um, so basically it seems like this old man who may have abilities that um, are beyond what you're usually supposed to have at that age could have uh, defended himself quite well and then taken revenge on the last surviving member of the group. Um, but of course, no one knows about this, and he's never suspected because he's an older man. And um, so, yeah, just an amazing kind of a a twist on a horror story or a crime story that uh, was a very um, very good story to read. Very so, sort of dark humor there in a way. So, um, but. Uh, so yeah, this is this is um, another one of those stories that connects to other stories. So if you're uh, looking for something fun to do, I would suggest looking into all the connections between all the stories. That could be fun. So um, I may have to do that at some point myself. But uh, let's see here. So that's that story. Let's see where we're at in terms of time. Um, so yeah, let me see here. Look at the chat. Um, yeah, is is amazing story there. 
Um, so I think uh, that's where I'm going to end it. There's one more story I had picked out, but it's a longer one, and I don't really want to get into that. Um, so we'll end end with those stories there today. Just um, I'll talk for a little bit longer though, just about the some of the patterns I've seen in Lovecraft stories. Um, and this has been pointed out before to me, and I've I've noticed it now is the way so many of the characters whatever they witness it always is too much almost always is too much for them to handle um in terms of processing it through their minds uh or they're they're able to handle it and but then they live the rest of their life basically trying to just keep up with that um and not think about that too much and not tell too much about all these things as well, except for in the story itself. So, um, so I, I find that, um, to be an interesting pattern there. Uh, of course, there's always the, these connections with dreams. Um, so many dream stories and or connections with dreams traveling between the dream and the waking realms. Um, in different ways. And uh, that one story with uh, that, that, um, the silver key, I think there may be a couple others here or there where time anomalies seem to be involved. That's a really amazing thing considering how far back these stories are written or released back in the early um, 1900s. Um, of course, there's other stories that around that same time, I believe, and before, but still, that's not, as far as I've seen, that's not super common around that time. I've already talked before about how, in many ways, Lovecraft seems to be a science fiction writer, just not in the nuts and bolts spaceship sort of variety that you might think when you think of science fiction. But a lot of his creatures seem to come from other parts of the universe or other dimensions um they seem to be able to interact through dreams lovecraft himself of course has said that basically that um there were beings trying to contact him in his dreams and that he wrote down basically some, a lot of his stories are about his experiences with those but even what he wrote in the stories can't completely describe what he what he experienced in those dreams. So um I really enjoyed doing the series. I've probably about three or four more episodes left of this. But uh that that's gonna do it for tonight. Thank you all for listening. I'll be back on Sunday with True Paranormal Stories from the Web on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care everyone.